I've just stolen this car, which my friend Edwin has left abandoned on his driveway for almost five years. So I'm giving him 24 hours to get this car running and driving or things are about to get very, very expensive for him. So I've told Edwin to be here this afternoon to work on another project, but what he doesn't know is that he's gonna be here for 24 hours. So I hope he's bought a toothbrush and maybe some spare pants. I think that's him now. Time is set, comes through the door, he's got five minutes and then we're off. Why? You said you were staying at your girlfriend's last night, so we took that opportunity no. to steal the car. How did you get this here? This was welded to the driveway. Oh, I know that, I know that. It's now welded to this lift. It ain't going anywhere until it's done it. I don't have anything to fix this. And he's right, because we're also not letting him out of the unit. So we'll get any parts he needs, but if he doesn't finish the car in 24 hours, then he has to pay for all of it. He's always told me this car is one day's work away from running. So let's see if that's true. This is my first ever project car, a Japanese import Mazda MX-5, which I bought when I was 17 years old. It's a Frankenstein car with parts from 10 different Miatas. I've turbocharged it, rebuilt it multiple times after blowing it up, and it's so sentimental to me that it's the one car I would never sell no matter what. However, since 2020, it's been abandoned on my drive as the turbo blew up and the clutch started slipping. But before the timer started, I noticed something. Hold oh, on, are those my sofas? You gotta sleep somewhere. It's a 24 hour challenge. So, ready? No. Ah, oh well. <laughs> right. ticking. This engine's been open to the elements for four years, but actually the first thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna see if the engine actually turns over. <laughs> well, you know, um, it's good compression. We'll call it good compression, but I saw a pipe. Oh, it's going. There we go. There we go. All right. So engine off the list. Potentially. We're gonna need new belts, a new crank bolt, idlers, tensioners, because that's an interesting color for a tensioner. There's just lots of things that 17, 18 year old Edwin did on this car that's a menace. You need to write a list, because I'm gonna forget that. So that's what Edwin did. And once that was done, I got on the phone with Boffy Racing to secure the new parts, which would be ready to collect first thing in the morning. Right, I'm just gonna go into teardown mode. Hey, I saw that. This is only held on with a zip tie. Now this side I feel like is a bolt. No, it's a zip tie. I need something to catch the coolant in. Uh, I've got my hands. That is the bucket for our brand new mop. I think you mean that is the bucket for our brand old coolant. Oh, I love farming shows. I do this every time. I pour coolant on the place I'm gonna be working in for the next three hours. The other thing that Will has kindly done for me, oh, you can't see it right now, it is up on the clock. Will, can you, can you show the people? The current temperature of today is 31 degrees, the hottest day so far of the year. Also, if you comment, that's not hot. I grew up in a f oven. That's really cool for you. I'm so glad for you. Uh, don't worry, Will, mate, you stay over there. You just watch. No worries. It looks like you're doing such a good job and you are 43 minutes in. Look at that, radiate it down. This is better. I've now got visibility and what such. There's gonna be a couple of things that stop this car from starting. All of the electronics are probably a bit mashed. So I need to get a battery. The whole front of the engine needs to come apart because I'm not gonna start turning it over until I know what is making it stop turning. Something's not happy. Oh, Will, here, just found this. Good gift. Mashkin <laughs> after! <laughs> Right, now we can find out what is stopping our aux belt from going. Is it A, our water pump? No. Is it B, our alternator? This MX-5 has power steering, but as you can see here, there's no power steering. And that's because I run a boot-mounted MR2 power steering system, which means I had to run an RX-7 alternator. This alternator doesn't turn up very often, so I'm gonna have to fix this. Shit. Now this all looks very stressful, but worse than that is buying a car with a dodgy past, which is why I have to remind you that if you're buying a car, you should always run a car vertical check. That's right, and all you need is a reg or a VIN number, and car vertical can tell you if a car's had a dodgy history or not. Yep, it can tell you if it's been clocked, crashed, or stolen. And that matters because hundreds of cars get crashed every single day, and some of them get put back on the road in an attempt to hide that dodgy history. What a disgrace. And here we have a really nice car. This is our merch guy Chris's V8 Audi R8. Edwin! What? Have you seen the R8 in here? No, because I can't leave this place. 
Oh, that is such a shame, because it's got green ticks for mileage, finance, and damage. Lucky Chris. Unfortunately for this Lamborghini Urus, it hasn't been so lucky because it's got a yellow warning for damage. And if we scroll down to the photos, we can see not only has it had a nasty, nasty front end smash, the rear wheels are bent on both sides. And if we keep scrolling down to the timeline, we can see it was damaged in the UAE and then another report of damage in the UK. So if you see this car back on the road looking absolutely pristine with a car vertical report, you can find out this shady past. The next time you're buying a car, van or motorbike, make sure that you run a car vertical check to make sure that the price you're paying matches its history. Otherwise, you're gonna end up working on something like this. And as a little added bonus, car vertical have offered you guys 20% off when you use code TDC. Where's my ratchet? So that's a you problem. Thanks, Car Vertical. First hour down, Edwin was making surprisingly quick progress, but to get the seized alternator moving again, he would need some of his favorite degreaser, which we didn't have. But he did have a sneaky suspicion that there may be some hiding in the MX-5's boot. This will be full of crap and shit. Yes, and parts. And then it will have the spaff in it. Is it not there? Okay, no, it's there. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, it's moving. Come on, work it in. Work that spaff in. Couple more rounds of that. We might get a working alternator out of that. Can we take a moment to just appreciate this engineering holding my coil pack up? That's a zip tie around the coil pack. Going to a zip tie that holds a zip tie that is onto the coil pack that is zip tied onto my cam angle sensor wiring. Not the cam angle sensor itself, but just the wires that are under complete strain. Am I an idiot? Ooh, it's actually quite clean in there. Lovely. Right, Ben, Hello. see that E there? Yes. Can you see how he lines up with that? Yes. Can you see that I there, it lines up with that? Yes. And then can you see how this little arrow there, he lines up with the top? Mm -hmm. Do you know what that means, mate? What? We're at top dead center. And if you'd like to buy some top dead center merch, go to our store, there's some t-shirts on there. This one will be on there soon, which is a new one, which is the TDC tape covering, oh God, what's under there? I don't know, for legal reasons, I can't tell. So go down the description, grab yourself a shirt or two, enjoy. I've got a surprise for Edwin. I think he's gonna like this, but it could get expenses for him. Oh, is this an upgraded T28? It is, it's a GT 2871R. But that was 450 quid. Hmm. And also, I'm gonna go and collect those bits from Boffy, yeah. but I knew you needed a clutch, so Boffy sent you out one, and they've said that this is free, again, if you do it in 24 hours. <sighs> So I was happy with our timing, but if I needed to pull the box and do a clutch, that's annoying. How much is that? This is 400 quid. That was 450. So 850 pounds that I might have to buy. It's a tough day at the office if you don't get it done in time. Well, I need to put the turbo on anyway, and I needed to potentially rebuild that. So I'm taking the turbo. The clutch. I'll do it. I'll do it, I'll take the clutch. Sold. Thank you very much, Boffy. Also, curse you. Don't try that on me, but fine. I'll happily do that for a free clutch. With Edwin now occupied with two major components, Ben and I decided that there was no point sitting around waiting for Edwin to get on with it. So we made a decision. Uh, we're off. What do you mean you're off? Because Ben and I are hungry, it's getting late and... Uh... <laughs> Did I get anything? Yeah, you can. But is there a catch? There is of course a catch. <sighs> Depending on what you want to eat, we're going to take some time away. You want some instant noodles? It's free. Have as many of those as you like. You can have them all night and all morning tomorrow. You want a McDonald's or similar? Yeah. Half an hour. You want some kind of half restaurant takeaway, say a Nando's? That's an hour. An hour? Perhaps a steak? It's two hours. I'm not confident enough yet and I've got to do a clutch. So I'm having noodles. <laughs> you guys could go. Fair. I'm going to eat some noodles. Right, well, that's free. Um, we are off. See you, mate. See you, mate. Come on, Ben. Off to the Ritz. Right, so we've arrived for some food. And it's Edwin's favorite, ah, it's such a shame. So Ben, perhaps a little meal? Air conditioning as well. Oh, oh man, those noodles are gonna look real sad right now. While we sat down for a lovely Nando's, Edwin was tucking into his gourmet meal, which gave him time to come up with a game plan. I finished my absolute feast of a dinner. While they're out, it will really annoy them if I can fully get the gearbox out before they get home. So that's my goal. And then I'm ready to stick the clutch in. I think it's time to get the car up in the air, get the gearbox out. I really, really hope they're enjoying their dinner. I really do. You know, they're my friends and they deserve to have a nice dinner. It'd just be a shame if someone spat in their food or something, I don't know. 
We're running low on supplies here. We've only just moved in. So my only option to drain my gearbox oil is into a pretzel box. Seems I'm being taunted with food tonight. Oh, beautiful. We have a good amount of metal on there, but we won't let that spoil our evening. One thing that was really making my life easier was our shiny new lift, courtesy of equipment for garages. They came in and installed an Ango E240X two-post lift, which can lift four tons and has features like electromagnetic locks, three-stage arms, and adjustable rubber pads. So it's perfect for our new unit and probably completely wasted on amateurs like us. The guys from equipment for garages had actually been in earlier that day before I arrived installing it ready for us to use in this video. This whole process would have been a thousand times more tedious for Edwin without being able to quickly lift the MX-5 up and down, so a huge thank you to them. Oh, that was, that was delicious and warm and the air conditioning was absolutely perfect. Oh, let's go and see where Edwin is. We thought we'd come back, but we did get a gift for Edwin. My favorite rapper. Hello. How are your noodles? So delicious. How much? This is free. Mm, that is so cold and nice. Now Edwin was cooling down, he got pretty arrogant about his progress. This gearbox is nearly ready to come out. What? So I hope you enjoyed your dinner because I'm going to enjoy all my free parts. Exhaust is out, drive shafts out, all of the support beams are out. Can you get it down on your own? I've done it before. Oh, here we go. Gearbox out, as easy as that. Meanwhile, Will was also super busy. I just pit maneuvered that guy. Cars are fun. This here makes me think that my rear main seal is leaking. Oil comes out the back of the engine on the crankshaft and goes onto your clutch and makes your clutch start slipping. So this car was just slipping clutches. It would not put down any power. It doesn't make much power anyway. This needed to happen if it was gonna come back, which is why I'm quite happy that I took Will up. we get the flywheel and pressure plate off and see what that clutch from rear main looks like. No need for that, it's now a Frisbee. So this is your rear main seal. This is your crankshaft and this seals up so you don't have oil shooting out the back of your engine. This side of the crankshaft is dry. Below it though, it's wet. And that is because our rear main is leaking. It's going onto the clutch, making the clutch slip and giving you no power. And what we need is mo power. As our friends stateside would say, I did rebuild this engine multiple times. It couldn't be me. I couldn't be the problem. I'd made good progress so far, but I was realizing just what I got myself into. And with that, Will had an unwelcome announcement. I'm going to bed. What? What am I meant to do? Also, you're like not going to complete this now. What are you talking about? You're a human being. Correct. You've got 17 hours to go. Right. You're doing that on no sleep and you've got to sleep here. No, no. Rules are rules. I've got no toothbrush. I've got no clothes to change into. I've got a shower. This is the unit. We've got TDC merch, which you can get on the shop. And we've got a kitchen sink so you can... This is the XL. See, so, there. And there, uh, I'll do. Perhaps it there. Look how cozy and warm you look. And what fantastic designs to sleep under. If you'd like any of the designs, you can go to TDC shop. As for me, I hope I don't wake up in the morning. Let's go. Let's go, yeah. Edwin was not happy. What I would do for a shower right now, and I guarantee those two bastards are nearly home at this point, showered, tucked in bed, like the coziest little guys you've ever seen. And meanwhile, I am washing myself with fairy liquid in a sink. This is great. Luckily, we went to Costco the other day and bought an infinite supply of microfibers. So consider me a full ceramic coating tonight. The time right now is about 4.30 in the morning. I have had barely any sleep. It's ridiculously hot in here. But worst of all is every time I wake up, all I'm confronted with is this. A close up of my time just ticking down. This is absolutely ridiculous. I have just had the best night's sleep in my own bed. But on my way in today, because Boffy are close to us, I picked up a care package for Edwin. So this is the parts he asked for yesterday, so he should be able to get this done. Good morning. Good morning. 
Oh, the parts. I, I genuinely was confused as to why you're holding a box. Ah, I'm at a point where I can go no further without these parts. Have you been cleaning? No. When have you been cleaning? I couldn't sleep. I was just sat there staring at that clock. So the moment it got light, I got up and I used the last of... He's, he's done. So I got as far as I could. So I've done the whole engine bay, the underside and the front wings and the lights and the crash bar and the firewall. But I mean, it looks better. Yeah. There we go. It's not running. And we are at eight hours and 34 left. You are at one work day we're without two, a lunch break. We're two thirds throughout. Edwin started going through the parts and realized he had made a very big mistake. Is there another box? No. The discs in the path? That wasn't on your list. Surely it was on my list. I went through that list twice over. There's nothing I missed there. I sent it to Boffy as well. They looked at it. They sent me everything that you gave me on the list. Can you go and get me some pads and discs, please? I could give it a go. But me and Ben got a busy day today. What? What do you mean? We're just going to go out. We've got some really crucial stuff to do today. I do have one deal for you, actually. So it's like nine in the morning. It's yeah. breakfast time. Now you could have breakfast or you could have this. Hold on. I'll tell you what, I'm flagging on just a single pot noodle cup. Any breakfast that you might want or Oh, it's a couple of degreases. You. Oh. Enjoy. Oh, you. Oh, that's all over my brand new shirt that you can buy on the TDC merch <laughs> shop. I was very cocky and confident last night. Now with eight and a half hours left and zero sleep, it's not looking good, bruv. Luckily for me, I then found some breakfast in the Boffy parts box. Oh. <laughs> Boffy are looking out for me. Thank you, Boffy, for feeding me the only thing that's not an instant noodle in the last 24 hours. It's also minion flavored. Tastes like yellow. <laughs> we are going to take over the moon. <laughs> mm. Breakfast. A huge thank you to Boffy Racing for having everything we needed in stock ready to buy, but also for providing the new operated clutch. If you ever need any MX-5 service or upgrade parts, either in the UK or internationally, hit the link in the description to check Boffy Racing out. Edwin then laid all of his new parts out to make sure he hadn't forgotten anything else, but it turns out he had actually missed some crucial parts. Maybe one other thing you might be missing. Oh, shit. Can you get me some tyres? Tyre streets will sort us out. Of course they will. Okay, right, let me get these wheels off. Shit! The realisation that this mistake could potentially cost him almost £300, the time pressure was really starting to mount on him. So he decided to get a move on and clean his rocker cover. So we saw that as our cue to leave and head out for the day's activities. Right, well, we're going. Please actually, like, unironically, come back with some haste. Yeah, we've got eight hours. Because I need brakes and I need tyres. This, this is quite ungrateful. You've been to get his, yeah. all his boppy parts this morning. He's like, hurry up. It's next to your house. Get it's where back, you live. Get back in that, but I've just been there. I'm sorry, you've just been there. Do you know where I've been? Here, not anywhere else. Exactly, and it hasn't even been running. All right, fair, fair dues. So I am at least, at the bare minimum, getting an ice cream today. Can I have one? No. <laughs> Wheels dropped off and ready for some new rubber, Ben and I headed off. And back at the unit, Edwin was all alone. You take this off, and then this little tiny piece of metal is what holds everything to your crank pulley. So we're gonna replace that, we're gonna replace the front main seal, and stick it all back together. In the car, we were excited for our big day out. So Edwin's tires are dropped off. We will collect those this afternoon. Sometime, maybe later. But in the meantime, me and Ben have got some stuff to do. Uh, and then we might get Edwin's brakes and drop them back to him as well. I mean, he's got like eight hours, so. Come on, Ben, let's have a jolly day. Do some fun stuff. At the unit, I was not doing fun stuff. I don't have a torque wrench because I think Alex and the guys have stolen it. So I'm at a dead end on the gearbox. I have to wait until Will is back now because he's going to go and get me a torque wrench. We're going to lose time. We're just about to tick under seven hours left. So seeing as I can't do anything on the gearbox, I'm going to try and get the turbo plumbed in because that's the next biggest issue. <sighs> I hope they're having a good time because I'm not. And we were having a good time. Uh, this one, Ben, or this one? Hmm. Not sure. I think I'll get some onions as well. Three packets of onion seeds. Oh, do I have three burner as well? Oh, look at that. Well, that's a bit of me. Perhaps some lettuce. Hmm. I need a petrol powered one, I think. Oh, pumpkins. Like for Halloween prep. 
While the guys were busy doing absolutely nothing helpful, I had gotten the new timing belt in and was now prepping the shiny new turbo. This is the new turbo that Will has bought me, and this is my old turbo. There are loads of parts that need to be swapped from this one over to this one, so I'm gonna take a moment to sit and chill, which I bet you they're doing as well. And we were. What a lovely day. It is lovely to be out in the fresh air. Absolutely delectable. Look at the size of that TV. That is massive. Wow. With Edwin's pace so far, I thought we may even have time for a movie. So I went inside to investigate. There were no three hour plus movies, so what's the point? I guess we'll just head back then. Reluctantly, we headed back to the unit to see Edwin, but not before collecting the wheels with the fresh tires courtesy of Tire Street. Hit the link in the description to check them out. Well, there's your, there's your brakes. One question for you. Why are you cosplaying as Gordon Murray? <laughs> it's a sunny day and I saw this shirt for sale. It looked nice, I bought it. Also, well, there's not much going on here. It's been four hours. The full turbo has been built, plumbed in, and is ready to spool. The flywheel has now just been put on and I must now put the clutch and gearbox back in. If I can have the gearbox done in the next hour and a half, I think I'm okay. How much worry have you got? New clutch time. So this clutch is good, supposedly. I think it's up to a 350 or 400 pound foot of torque, which is my final goal with this car. So this is very cool. Thank you very much, Boffy, for sending this, even though you are contributing to my potential downfall. Right, so we've already changed the pilot bearing, so we're just gonna go straight in with rear. Clutch and flywheel now installed, it was time to put the gearbox back in, which would become a very tedious and time-consuming task. I wanted to have the gearbox in and done with three hours left on the clock. The gearbox currently will not go in. I've got 26 minutes. It's not looking good, bro. Can't you want to put it in there? It's very good, Ben. Your observations today are on point. However, time is of the essence. And I believe that part of the reason why this guy won't go in is because my clutch isn't lined up correctly. So you see how you can see all of those marks on the bottom part of that bright silver part? That is the clutch inside the pressure plate. So you can see that the input shaft of the gearbox has been trying to get through it, but it can't. It can only slide into the pressure plate, can't get past that because it's not centered correctly. I don't have time for this, but such is cars. Clutch now readjusted, I went for another attempt. Oh, I'm bored of the suffering, so I'm helping. Well, helping, I am butter pair of hands. No, that won't help, mate. Can you dry them? <laughs> Will quickly regretted offering to help. Give me one more. Hello? <laughs> Just keep pace right where it was before. Keep pumping. What the f <laughs> Man, I love the Irish joke. <laughs> Even with the extra help from me, the gearbox was still an absolute pain to get in. But after many attempts, we finally managed it. Oh, oh, do you hear that? I heard that. That sounds promising. After spending ages wrestling with the gearbox, it decided it was time for some payback and took a victim. This was from a sponsored segment from back on Unnamed Brand. Was that six months ago? Maybe eight months ago, nine months January ago? This year? I've been putting this thing through absolute hell. I wear it every day, smashing it up on cars. But unfortunately, today we lay it to rest. Please. Another. The gearbox is in. That's one of the worst experiences I've had working on the MX-5. I've taken the gearbox out of an MX-5 upwards of 10 times, and that one was the worst, probably because I'm rushing it. I have to rush, because we've got two hours and 35 minutes left. So I'm gonna throw the drive shaft in, get all of this bolted up, and then get the car down and see if we can start getting it started, because we still don't know if this engine wants to run or not. With time really ticking now, Edwin got the underside components back together and then embarked on performing the quickest oil service of his life. It's all getting a little bit hairy now, so I'm doing a very quick oil change because this oil has been in here for many, many years, open to the elements. Oh no, stop sloshing. There's no way that could go terribly wrong. Oil drained, Ben had a question for me. If you had to give up all your cars, which one you keep it, is it? It has to be this one because this is, this is my car. This car cannot go to someone else. We don't have time for this discussion, but MX-5s are shit cars. Anyone that tells you MX-5 is a Miata is the answer, they've never driven a good car. Back in the old days for the same money when these things were 500 quid, you could get a better car. And now when they're three or four grand, you can get way better cars for the money. They aren't good. They're just a good thing to learn on. They're a good thing to build and have fun with. But if you think they're good cars, bad news for you. Now we'd wasted time ranting, Edwin got back to work and finished putting the exhaust in and connecting the turbo, which made him realize he'd forgotten yet another thing. 
shit. I asked him for a three inch and he did give me one. What it is in fact is two and a half. That means I can't run the exhaust right now, which means we might be open down pipe unless I can rely on my infinite stock of hoarding parts and hope that I left one of the old, yes, go on. We love it. We love to see it. Old Edwin, he was holding on to things. That small victory was then followed by another issue. Okay, so starters wired up. We're an hour and 11 minutes. So we're close to being able to start having a go at firing up. Um, I've got all the turbo plumbed up. Shit. Oh no. I need the oil drain. The oil that comes in the top of the turbo then drains out under low pressure into the bottom of the block. I don't have anything. With time ticking, Edwin came up with a very interesting bodge. Oh my God, it fits. For the essence of time, it will have to do. Bodge in, it was time to give the car power for the first time in four years. Things aren't looking good. I've got an hour left and I've got way too many things to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the battery out, which is gonna cost me, but I need to check if the car even turns over, if things even work, because there's no point in me doing other work on prep if the car's not even gonna turn on. The new battery was in, so the only logical way to test it was by playing with the pop-up headlights. There we go. MX-5s are for f***ing idiots. Now we had power, I was ready to see if the engine would crank, which made me remember something very, very crucial that I'd forgotten to do. I so nearly went to turn the key to crank the car and realized there's no oil in the car at all. Oil in and engine explosion avoided, it was time to see if this sad old project car would finally start. Are in the hole? No. But then I remembered something. I have an immobilizer on this car. Genuinely couldn't remember that. Oh. What is that pissing out of there? That is coming out of this pipe. Oh God, yeah, that is. Oh, yo. That's fuel. I've got a very quick solution for you. Might as well at this point. I tried my best to work around the massive fueling issue, but with old fuel shooting out of every single Lincoln connection, it just wasn't safe to keep starting the car. So I had to come to the incredibly disappointing decision. I'm not a quitter, but in 31 minutes, I can't resurrect everything that he's doing on this car. Unfortunately, I think I may forfeit. In that case, I think you probably come and see your bill. <laughs> right, so this is your list of parts. Yeah. You've got a clutch, turbo, the bits from Boffy, yep. tire streets, tires, brakes, and your battery, which all comes to that. If we do a little bit of maths, your bill actually comes to. Oh, You're paying by cash, card, PayPal, perhaps? A uh, card. Lovely. What an expensive video for Edwin, but not for us. If you want to see a similar video to this where he worked on my X5, which also went pretty badly as well, you can see that here. And uh, we'll see you next week. Um, or maybe I'll send the bailiffs around to Edwin. I don't know.